This is the future. Evolution. This is the future. Hello my fellow Dream Chasers, Kenzie Retro, the original Dream Chaser here and welcome to another edition of Kenzie Retro's Top 10s. This time around we, well last time I did my Top 10 Games of 2019, now I'm going to go into the world of cinema. I'm going to be going through my Top 10 Films of 2019. Now, this is going to be the last time I have this rule in place. That I go by the initial release date of the film. Because I am from here on out, I am going to be taking the UK release date into account. So if it has a 2020 UK, so from here on out, if it has a UK release date for in this case 2020, for example, if it has a UK release date for 2020, it is eligible for the list. But I'm going to be going through my top 10 films of 2019 for the initial 2019 release date. And of course, they have to be films that I have seen. And um, some tighter guide, some tighter rules in place for me. Uh, I'm only allowing one Marvel Cinematic Universe film in the top 10. And I think it's a no brainer what one I'm going to be including. Uh, and I'll. And as far as uh, Disney live action remakes are concerned, I'm only including one live action remake in the in the top ten. So nevertheless, let's get into the list. Number ten, and it's one that came out uh, towards the beginning of the year. Zac Efron as Ted Bundy in Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile. Oh my word. It was like... Now, again, this is one of those films that I went into detail on in my, rev in my review of the film. It is... It's very... It's very intense. Uh, let's just put it this way. It, it was like I was seeing two different people being portrayed by Zac Efron... And he was so good in the role. And uh, it there are a lot of there are a lot of things it does get historically accurate, but of course, uh, with it being a film, you're bound to have a few inaccuracies for the uh, sake of creative purposes. But nevertheless, it is a great film. I'd recommend you watch, but it's not one I'd recommend for multiple. It's not one I'd recommend for multiple viewings. Number nine, and it is Rocket Man, the biopic on Elton John. Now, I will be honest with this one. I prefer this over Bohemian Rhapsody. Now, that's not to take away from how good Bohemian Rhapsody is. The reason I prefer Rocket Man over Bohemian Rhapsody is because I grew up more with Elton John's music than I did with Queen's music. Because with Queen's music, it was just the classics, Bohemian Rhapsody, We Will Rock You, We Are the Champions, Another One Bites the Dust, all those. But with Rock, but with Elton John, there was a lot of songs that I knew. Uh, uh, there was uh, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting, uh, Rocket Man, the title track, Your Song. Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me even makes an appearance as well. And uh, towards the beginning of the film, The Bitch Is Back. That, that, is, that is legitimately a title of one of, the Elton, one of Elton John's songs. And then it finishes off with I'm Still Standing. I mean, I was sitting there singing along to the songs. Well, granted, I am an Elton John fan after all. But, uh, but yeah, if you're a fan of Elton John, this is definitely one I'd highly recommend you go and see. Number eight, and this is the li Disney live-action remake. Uh, uh, 
but which one is it going to be? Bearing in mind, folks, uh, I've got the Lion King on in the background. I've got the TV muted so that way it doesn't, so that way the um, the audio from the film doesn't get picked up by my microphone in case you know copyright issues. And it's it's an absolute mess. But nevertheless, it's not the Lion King remake. Reason for that, uh, reasons will be explained shortly. But uh, instead, it is Aladdin. That is the live action remake that takes the slot on the list here. Now, the, some of the changes, now, the changes they made, oh, well, see, you've not seen live action, duh. It, lo it looks incredible. The presentation is fantastic. Um, they've made a few changes on the soundtrack, and as far as uh, one of the songs is concerned, it's a song that was added in to the remake, because um, with these live-action remakes, you're bound to have a song that's written for the remake. In this case, it was Speechless, Jasmine's song. Um, Naomi Scott, she did a fantastic job as Jasmine. Uh, sh uh, the fact that the fact that in this version you've got Jasmine wanting to be the Sultan, and uh, the song "Speechless" pretty much sums that up perfectly as to why she feels she w she would be a good Sultan. And uh, but everyone's just like, "Nope, you're just a princess, and that's all you're ever gonna be." But with "Speechless," the the guys that wrote the song. <laughs> yep, the same guys that did the music for The Greatest Showman, which might be on a top 10 list uh, at some point over the course of the next week. Number 7 now, Detective Pikachu. This is how a video game movie should be done. How should it be done? Five words. Stick to... The source material. What is so difficult about sticking to the source material? No wonder video game movies have been so bad. But why is this one so good? Like I said, the film stuck to the source material. Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu is something I never thought I would enjoy. And uh, they even managed to get the original voice actor for Pikachu to... Uh, Make the Pikachu sound effect. Pika Pika! And that's definitely what makes it stand out. Right. Next up, number six Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Now, Reception for this film was mixed, but I went to the triple bill with James. Uh, we still need to do we still need to do our review of the film, so we'll be able to go into a bit more detail on on that. Um, and my goodness me, what satisfying end to the Skywalker saga! There is a huge reveal which I'm not going to spoil here because. I was legit, I mean, me and James were legitimately, like, jaw-dropped. And we were, we were sitting there like, what? Now, I don't think, I don't think it's on the same level as Luke, I Am Your Father, because within the age of social media, it's very difficult to keep these things a secret. But this is why you avoid social media in the run-up to the film. You avoid all these articles and then you avoid the film being spoiled for yourself. And if you have the film spoiled because of these leaks, you've got no one to blame but yourself! Number five, it's another Disney film and it is Frozen 2. Oh boy. Talk about going into the unknown. I mean... I have often said Frozen is overrated, but it doesn't take away from the fact that the f on first viewing, 
Frozen is a great film, overrated song aside. There was one song in this film that I was pleasantly surprised with as far as how they actually put it together. Uh, Lost in the Woods, I think it's called. It's uh, Christoph's song. It it was it was composed to sound like a '90s ballad, and I was just like, "That is so cool." But uh, there are a few emotional moments. Uh, there is one or two emotional moments in there that brought. One of them actually brought back, um, uh, brought, uh, brought flashbacks back to uh, when I went to see uh, Avengers Infinity War. And I was just like, oh, Disney, don't do this to me! Right, number four now, Downton Abbey. Yes, there was a Downton Abbey film out this year. And, uh, well... Last year, I should say, because uh, I'm recording this on New Year's Day. What made this film stand out? It stayed true to the spirit of the award-winning TV show. And they managed to get the cast from the TV show on board for this film. And I was like, I went to see, this was one of the films I went to see with my mum alongside um, alongside one of my, alongside my ne alongside one of my next entries well alongside the next entry in this top 10 um, and we both thoroughly enjoyed it I mean during the title sequence and then when you hear that iconic Downton Abbey theme I was sitting there in a flood of tears. But man, it felt good to be back at Downton Abbey. I mean, and the writing, but for Maggie Smith's character especially, just brilliant. If you're a fan of the show and you haven't seen this film yet, definitely, definitely get it when you, definitely, uh, definitely, definitely watch the film when you get the chance. Now this next entry is another one that me and my mum went to see, uh, Le Mans 66. Now I've stated that this could be a serious contender during award season. Um, Ford vs Ferrari is the title of the film over in the States. Christian Bale, Matt Damon, building up to the 1966 24 hours of Le Mans where Ford are trying to end Ferrari's dominance at uh, one of the most prestigious races on the um, on the motorsport calendar, and this is what I love about um, not just biopics but sports films as well. They have those moments where you're right on the edge of your seat, and when it when they actually get to the main event itself, the twenty four hours of Le Mans, it is just. Pedal to the metal, edgy as seat, fantastic all the way. Uh, number two now, Toy Story 4. A sequel that nobody asked for, but everyone enjoyed regardless. I mean, it's an encore that we did not want, but... We enjoyed it regardless. Prior to the film actually being released, it was certified 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was see, it was saying goodbye to that one part of your childhood that it was. Said, yeah, we we said goodbye to. We official. This was the film that officially said goodbye to our childhoods. But uh, doesn't change. Doesn't take away from the fact it was a great film. <sighs> to infinity and beyond, guys. 
And on to number one. Before that, I'm going to go into some honourable mentions. Some of the key honourable mentions here. Captain Marvel. A lot of people didn't like this, but I enjoyed it. Um, Spider-Man Far From Home. Great encore for the Infinity Saga. I didn't realise it was going to be the end of the Infinity Saga until a few weeks after the film came out. And of course, the Lion King live action remake. It didn't make it onto this list. It didn't make it onto the list because it, um, a majority of it was pretty much shot for shot, apart from a couple of new songs that were written for the film. Never Too Late over the end credits and Spirit uh, by Beyonce. Uh, what other one? What other honorable mentions are there? Alita Battle Angel, fantastic film. Fighting with My Family. Uh, WWE superstar Paige, but another sports biopic, and uh, another superhero movie in the form of. <laughs> uh, but then, of course, we've got to get to the and then uh, yesterday, uh, musical jukebox film, alternate reality where the Beatles don't exist. How crazy would that be, if that actually happened? I mean, imagine if that happened with me in Westlife. Uh, but yeah, um, but of course some dishonorable mentions. Then we've got we've got Dumbo, the other live act, Disney live action remake that came out um, uh, in twenty nineteen. This is not what I wanted from a Tim Burton film. Um, X Men Dark Phoenix. Uh, it wasn't the closure we wanted for this era of. Um, X-Men, Men in Black International, oh, man, I wish I could have that film neuralized from my memory, but nevertheless, that's out of the way, it is time to get a recap of the top 10 before we get to the number 1, number 10, Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile, number 9, Rocket Man, number 8, The Aladdin Live Action Remake, number 7, Detective Pikachu, number 6, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, number 5, Frozen 2, number 4, Downton Abbey, number 3, Le Mans 66, and number 2, Toy Story 4. So what could possibly be number one? Well, I think I'll just let this clip speak for itself. Avengers Endgame of... I mean, what else could I go with apart from the highest grossing movie of all time? This is another one I went into detail on in my spoiler-free review. But uh, my goodness me, what a climax. 11 years of storytelling. A once-in-a-generation moment in films that defines storytelling with that clip I just showed. Yes, it was overloaded with fan service. Don't get me wrong. That is a major criticism I have with the film. But I didn't see that as a bad thing because the fan service was there for those that had either not been there from the start or for those that hadn't seen all the films. And it is just very, very satisfying. And the last ever Stanley cameo we're ever going to get. Because he passed away a few months uh, before Captain Marvel released. And uh, he never got to see Captain Marvel or Avengers Endgame. He never got to, he never got to see the finished product. But I'm sure in the great, but I'm sure in that great comic book in the sky, he will be very proud of what was accomplished. Excelsior, Stanley, you will never be forgotten. And that is my top ten films of the year. What was your film of the year for 2019? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed what you saw today, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be a dream chaser like myself, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. And make sure that notification bell goes boom.
Did somebody say boom? And on that note, that's all, folks. Good night, everybody!